Hello and welcome to another edition of Extra Connections here on JLJ Media. I'm James Live Jr. And I have two people you've seen in 10 hundred thousand things. You may even know their names. They've been around for a while and I'm happy to be talking to both of them. We're laughing already and talking already. They have, I mean, tons of knowledge of Hollywood, I can tell you already. They have a story about Peter Jason. I'm going to tell them that in a second. Uh, but they started, they actually started a movie that's out called Deep in the Forest, coming out May 31st, VOD. Um, it was written, produced, and directed by Jeremy Lanning. Is that last thing right? Um, and yeah, so we never met the guy. <laughs> I never met him, so whatever he calls himself, I don't care. <laughs> so apparently they did this film on their own, but they're here. And anyway, we're going to talk about that and their careers because I'm fans of both of them. And so I'm going to do it the other way. So wait a minute, James. If one of us, if we were both drowning, which would you save? I have two arms. I could grab You're fans of both of us. You got to make a decision. Do you want a good looking, uh, uh, gray haired guy or do you want an old? <laughs> or me. <laughs> I'm all, the question would be, what would you give me if I saved your life? Which one? What's going on? <laughs> I, I, I'll give you, I'll tell you what I'd give you. I'd give you my career right now, which is. <laughs> Just let me drown, okay? Let me drown, I'm going to let me drown. It hey, is. Stewie, because Stewie, need, he, Stewie needs a lot of help. You better save Stewie. Save I'll me. I'll go up at the beach. I'll, right, I'll, I'll go I, James, back. edit this I'll, out. I'll, this I'll, is, I'll this is a bad bit. Stewie, I love it. No, I love it. Get rid of this. Stewie <laughs> goes to the beach with one of those little tires around him, you know, and a little duck <laughs> flapping thing, a little flapping duck. That's what he does. I'm leaving all this in to show them that you're still here. Flapping Duck was what my wife used to call me when we first got married. Hey, so sincere. I remember, no, and I remember her sister, oh Sin St. Cyr. Oh my God. Stuart Pankin. Uh, let's get Peter serious Jason. now. <laughs> what? It's Stuart Pankin and Peter Jason. And Peter yes. Jason and Stuart Pankin. I mean, I'll do both, I'll both do both, do it both ways. Well, gentlemen. Thank you. Gentlemen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peter Jason. So I was on a I was a guest on a podcast called Evolution of Movies. They asked me to do forty eight hours. Ooh. And I, there's, there's, there's another podcast called Evolution of Movies. They asked me to come on and be a guest. Okay. And the movie reviewed was forty eight hours. And you're in one of the iconic scenes that doesn't hold up today at all. That's but the one with Richard a, Pryor, right? <laughs> It was with the, uh, the other one, Eddie oh, Murphy. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, anyway, and Nick Nolte. But that scene in that, and I'm like, I'm from San Francisco, so I'm like, in the Mission District, there would be no cowboy bar in San Francisco in the 80s, first of all. Um, but it's a, but it's, there's you. There you are. Like, I'm like, there he is. You look the oh, same. I believe that was supposed to be LA. I thought it was supposed to be San Francisco, I thought. Is there was LA. 48, another 48 hours in San Francisco. Oh, okay. Maybe I got mixed up either way. But either way, I was like, the place bar, they had it was like. Torchy's Bar in LA, which Walter uses in a lot of his movies. Torchy's Bar, I think, was a bar in Long Beach that he frequented growing up as a kid. Uh, Here's a story about Peter Jason in 48 hours. I tell it a lot. I'm going to tell it again. Although I LA. would much prefer talking about myself, but I'll talk about Peter. Peter goes into, a, Peter goes, a, get back on screen. Peter goes to, uh, into audition and he auditions for uh, whatever the part is. And the, uh, the auditioner said, that, well, that was very good, Peter, but we're looking for more of a guy like the bartender in 48 hours. And Peter goes, I was the guy in bartender in 48 hours. Did Peter get the part? No. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's frightening. <laughs> wow, that's a good story, Stuart. That's a good story. There was, there was, a, movie, there was a movie called, uh, 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 Alien Nation. Yes, I really yeah. And, I like uh, that. Uh, directed by Graham Baker, starring uh, James Kahn and uh, yes, uh, yes, a lot of the, of the Coneheads. And I, I, uh, I auditioned for the TV series. I played the part of a guy named Fedora Chuck. I invented the role of Fedora Chuck, this nasty cop. And uh, so I went to the audition for the part of Fedora Chuck. And I walked in and I read for it. And they said, "Well, you know, you're not really right." I said. I, I created the role. They said, yeah, you're not really nice. Thank you for coming in. Next. Oh, my goodness. And that's why show business is in the state that it is today. Right, exactly. No, wait, no, so you guys. And also, I invented that, that role. Yeah. No, here's, what's so funny? You guys are. Stuart Pankin type. <laughs> well, you both, you both are those kind of guys who everybody's seen and everything, right? You pop up and shit all the time. 
And they're like, I know him from that thing and him from that thing. I mean, what is that? I mean, now you've been around for a while. What is that? Is it because, are you it like, I'm still here, so screw you all. I'm still here, though. Or what, what does it feel like? We are still here. You are still here. You are. Well, we, you know, just before the pandemic, we did Deep in the Forest. So, you know, yeah. we, 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 we worked until we couldn't. And then, uh, and now we're, we're look, I, I always say, if anybody wants me, call me, but, uh, we've worked several that. times together. Though. We, he, we played husband and wife. Oh, in a, in a Peter movie. and I have known each other for 20, over 25 years. And we've done oh, a lot of projects oh, together, yeah, including the movie yeah, where yeah. we were married. We played uh, husband and wife. You know, yeah. Uh, uh Keith, uh, oh, what's Keith's last Keith, name? Keith, oh yeah. Keith. Great. David, Keith David. Yeah, Keith David. Yes, Keith David. Keith David and I were, were at loggerheads in that because we're the two husbands, two uh, fathers, and Stewie was my wife in a movie called Hopelessly in June, which was great. It was fun, really fun to do. What is it like working together, you guys? Because you guys have a great uh, rapport off camera. Is it you know, so first of all, I, 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 when Peter Jason is on the set, he is so divisive, he is so negative. Uh, pe people, you know, stay away from him. You can, it's, he's like a nation of one walking around because nobody wants to talk to him because he brings everybody down. Are you going to eat that? Are you going to eat that? Can I, can I, uh, <laughs> listen, you have wait, you got too much. You have, can I have a little of it? Peter Jason, Peter Jason is uh, people, you know, pay other people to make sure that he's on the set of a movie because he is, uh, he's the best. I put a lot of people to work. He does. Okay. That's how I, you know, that's right, Peter. Wait a minute, where are, my handlers? Where, where are my handlers? Your handlers, yeah, they're off right now. Yeah, they're off right now. Wow. Yes. It's great working with Peter to answer your question. And Peter said, what about my Stuart? Stuart? Stuart's impossible to work with. You can never find him. Oh, you never oh, you're find him. <laughs> Always Stuart, off set. Stuart Always and off. I met on a movie called Arachnophobia. Oh, Arachnophobia, yeah. that's right. Oh, we, yeah, fell, yeah. we fell in love on that movie and... Uh, I went over to the gas station with Stewie one night after dinner and because it was the only little convenience store. I was buying cigarettes and he was getting candy bar. And we walk in and it's, oh, lotto tickets. Give me one of those and one of those. I'm having 25 bucks. And I said, here, you get one. And he, and he went, oh, 25 bucks. And he, he rubbed the top of my head before he did it. So every time we get together now, he rubs the top of my head before. For luck. He's the luckiest man I know. Just for luck. So funny. Do people, so do people come up to you at all? I would say, I mean, see you at a restaurant or a store and go, hey, do they ever do that? Yeah, they go, you're my neighbor, right? <laughs> I, 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 or I went to high school with you, right? Yeah. Oh, how funny. They're not you sure. Know, friend, you're, 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 you're in their living room. You know, you're like family with them. You've been right. in your living room so many times that they think you're kind of like uh, fam. I, I, I love the one with, uh, I did a movie with Rory Calhoun one time. <laughs> We're flying, flying from Texas, uh, from Houston, uh, uh, from the Dallas, Fort Worth to, to uh, Arkansas, to Fayetteville. And we're changing planes and these two old women come walking across the, the, the whole lobby slowly you know and he goes watch this <laughs> and it they, they take forever to get there but they finally get there excuse me didn't you used to be rory calhoun <laughs> he says yes i did i'm now steve mcqueen thank you for noticing <laughs> he signs steve mcqueen on the thing and sends him on the way <laughs> You know, I, you know, people in New York, when I when I was younger, people used to recognize me in L.A. They're a little jaded, but I make it a point if I ever see a character actor, you know, anywhere in any restaurant street, I, I, I go out of my way. Five bucks, right? <laughs> I go out of my way to tell them that I like them because character actors don't get, you know, necessarily recognized as much as Rory Calhoun. We don't get the cash. <laughs> We so I try to make them, I try to bring a little Peter Jason love into their lives. We don't get to go to front of the line for lunch. We know they keep us away from the front of the line for lunch. We got to go to back of the line. Get her all top of the call sheet first, big principles, <laughs> then the rest of y'all. It's you guys. What's your number I... on the call sheet? Excuse yeah, me. Exactly. You got a num right. What's your number on the call sheet? Four? Back of the line. <laughs> <laughs> I know because it's, I do, no, so do I. I. I know a lot of friends who are character actors. They've been, and, and that's the whole thing. They're like, I'm in the business. I'm still working when I, when I work and I'm great. And I saw that I saw that documentary with that guy and that thing and that gal and that thing. And those are really fun. And you're like, yeah, I recognize her and I recognize him. And I think it's, I think it's really cool. I think it, this business is tough, right, folks? It's tough. It's a business. I mean, it is, isn't it? I thought it was like a, I thought it was like a, I've never worked for a living. So that's the great thing about it. 
<laughs> I like that. I actually, I, I played actually sports for eighteen years, then I play acted for the next six. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. I have a degree in gynecology, so I'm on my off days. That, that's what I do. Oh, I thought you were a brain surgeon. Oh no, no, that's too hard. You got to have a brain to be a brain surgeon. You're exactly, right. exactly, right, exactly. Uh -huh. But, but Stuart, yes, you sir. Vo you voiced the, the the one of the infamous shows of T of TV dinosaurs. Um, it's to me, like, infamous. I know I love, I love it, but like it only lasted. You know, it was a short time. It was all. I mean, it's very, it was very about, popular. About three years. About three yeah, years. so it was, it was very popular. So I love it. People always talk about it in, in these weird texts. I'm like, it was. I liked it. I thought it was great. I liked it. So I you know, it. Um, it, first of all, it was a great show. Second of all, now that it's been re-released on Disney Plus, people are re rediscovering it. You know, and not to. You know, I, it's not me. I, it sounds like I'm bragging, which I would be happy to do. But during the pandemic. Uh, when nobody had anything else to do after this, after dinosaurs was re-released, I was getting two to four autograph re requests a day wow. for weeks and weeks for wow. to sign stuff and send it back. Do you sign your photo or do you sign some uh, gorilla or what a uh, monkey or what? Uh, what it's what, a what, dinosaur, Peter. Alligator? Yes, was it an alligator? I mean, uh, you know, when you really look at Peter, the guy, it was he. Peter, he was this like close a, to the camera, kind of looks like my character. He was, he was a prehistoric. Uh, was he a prehistoric kind of a, a kind of a Gila monster? What exactly was he? Anyway, James, you can just turn him off. We'll talk him for the next. <laughs> wow. No, no, no. The thing is, I mean, I was the ending was sad because of that because they, they went like the ending of what dinosaurs. So it was all so it was kind of sad. She was like, well, I like, I mean. Yeah, it was a end. sad, controversial, and perfect ending. That's why I said, if, that's why I said the infamous thing. Because that, that's the whole, I remember that whole thing. Yeah, like, tell the ending. Don't tell them the ending. Spoiler well, alert. Spoiler alert, folks. Spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. There are no more dinosaurs. Right, right, exactly. Right, exactly. Right, exactly. Right, exactly. <laughs> but I, but I, no, I, remember, I remember it in real time. I remember the whole thing. I remember it. I thought, well, that's how it's supposed to end. It was sad. That's how it's supposed to go. Because I thought it was a great ending. People, mother, parents then had a little bit of a dislike for it because the kids were sad but that you know something the hell with them the kids they'll grow out of it i just thought what are we going to eat what are we going to eat <laughs> oh my goodness he's not even the heavy one he's talking about food well, there you go well wait so you guys i mean so how did this film come into you to your orbits i mean like you're sitting at home it's before pandemic like how did, who told who came to you each of you guys how, how did it come to you wait right, i'll start peter jason has worked and i've worked with him a, a bunch but peter's worked with jeremy lanny a lot. He does short films. This is his first feature full length movie. And Jer Jeremy always goes to Peter to, to, to help cast things because he, you know, Jeremy's not, he doesn't have his finger on the pulse of the business. So Peter does. So Peter casts it. So that's, that's how, I, well, I've worked with Jeremy. I guess he asked me to do it, but Peter can, can tell you more about Jeremy Lanny and, and Demon the Forest because he's the star. <sighs> You say it with yeah. such interesting disdain. I don't Certainly care. not billed as the star, nor does my part require it. But uh, Jer Jeremy uh, came to me through Paula Malcolmson, played Trixie on Deadwood. Oh, okay. He called okay. me up and asked me to be in this in this short, and I said, uh, "All right, let me read it." And I read it. it was uh, you know okay, and and I called Jeremy. I said, "Yeah, okay. Uh, who's it, who's going to be in it?" And he said, Paula. And I said, yeah, I know who are the other actors? He said, well, I'm going to get all these actors from Glendale College. And I said, well, good luck to you. And uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to work with a bunch of actors from Glendale College, you know? Yeah. And uh, I said, do you have any money for these people? He said, well, uh, not really. I said, well, yeah, well, good luck with you. And uh, I hung up. And, I, and I actually, I didn't hang up. I said, listen, go get some money and, uh, uh, and I'll help you with the actors. Okay. And I said, but when you get the money, don't pay the actors scale because it's an insult. That's the lowest common denominator you can give an, uh, give an actor. I said, pay him 50 bucks above scale. I don't care what you pay him, but more right. than scale. Right. It's like, you, I'm happy to have you. Here's all I can have is this scale plus a little something extra, you know? And so I got, he, he called me a year later and he says, I got the money and uh, let's do the movie. And I said, great. Well, here's the, this actor, this actor, this actor, this actor. And Stewie was the doctor, I think, or something. I don't know what he was in there, but we had, I, I got all my people together. We all did the movie. He all ha he handed us a check at the end of our last scene. Wow. A nice check. It's a nice okay. check. Okay. And we walked okay. off the set, you know, and everybody was happy. 
And uh, he continued, I said, well, geez, that was great. I didn't think he'd come up with that, but he did. And uh, he continued to do that. And his, his honesty in working with, with everybody and, and, and his, his, his planning and his organizational abilities were fantastic. Like every 15 minutes was, was marked out on the call, sh- on, the, uh, on the worksheet there. And, and you know, finish that scene in 15 minutes, boom, next minute, boom, next minute, boom, next minute, boom. And he was organized and he lived by that. And, he, and uh, the organization is all with him. And that's why I, I, lo- I loved working with him. I've done maybe 10 things with him now. So oh, wow. I would say, I would say, because you guys have been on so many different sets, you know how unorganized, too organized it can be. So I'm sure. Oh, that like disorganized, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And so, I, Stuart, isn't it great that you have people in the business who look out for you? That, that we, all, we all should have somebody, people looking out for us and stuff. Well, the, the best thing in the business is to make contacts that, you know, where work breeds work. I mean, that's the best thing that can happen. I mean, that's happened to me and I'm sure Peter, I know Peter, you know, for years and years and years, but uh, like arachnophobia, uh, that, that I didn't, I went in, I met with Frank uh, uh, Marshall who directed it. I didn't even read. And then I got the call to do it. I thought, see, as an actor, that's spectacular. Yeah, yeah. But things like, you know, for me, like not necessarily the news and, oh, yeah. and dinosaurs that happened because, because you meet and work with other people and they remember you and, they, and if they're like, and if they're in the position to, to hire you, then you, you get more and more work. And the more work you get, the more work you get, you know, until you get old and doddering like Peter and me, and then, uh, then it doesn't matter. Hey, no, I, and as I worked till he died, I, I interviewed him at 97 years old. He was working still. It's that folks that be working. I mean, that's like that, that's because Peter helped him. I mean, <laughs> Peter, Peter, Peter put him in a bunch of projects. See, that's how you do it. Well, I mean, I know because in this business, I mean, longevity, I guess, is the key, right? That's the key. I've been in business 15 years, and people are like that's a long time. For some You're time. a baby. I'm still, that's why I said, I'm still young in this business, right? That's why I'm, I'm taking it, but still 15 years. Look at that was, resume, it's 400 long. Yeah, I don't sure for him for, for both you guys. He's played oh. Santa Claus twenty seven times. He's Jewish. And then, there you go. <laughs> and that's cultural that. appropriation. I oh, hate that's Santa Claus. Santa's not a Jewish character. He, he, that's <laughs> cultural appropriation, and I really object to it. Anytime I see Ed Asner Santa Claus, I just turn the TV off. Yeah, I do I, too. That's very unfair for Jews. I spoke at his memorial, and I only I cut it real short because I was so upset with him dying and not paying me. I always say oh, to Barry. people, if, if you watch Peter Jason's IMDb on your phone, you'll run out of battery power before you get to the end of it. And that's, that's the great thing. That. That's the great. I love that. Yeah, that is great. That's, that's, no, I mean, I've done a lot, but Peter Jason, Peter Jason worked with, uh, uh, um, he worked in Intolerance and Birth of a Nation and, and, uh, and Gone with the Wind. I mean, he's been I mean, Well, I wasn't in it. I pulled the rocket. Yeah. I shot the rocket off. That rocket that goes, mm, like that. I wanted it to go slow because it went. You know, the baby, the baby slow. cries and gone with the wind. That was Peter. I was, I was gone for the wind, <laughs> or gone by the wind. I'm not sure which one. Oh I was. My God, that's that's hilarious, actually. Um, no, I'm saying, but I've been told people because I started out scratch. I didn't have nobody helping me, and I started out in that 15 years is pretty good. Like just good. I started, I started on House, the TV show. That's my first. That was my first. Never day. saw. You never watched House <laughs> with Hugh Laurie, that guy. That's a great show. I love the show, but I'm saying, but that I, I went from there and continued. So I'm saying, you guys started somewhere, and now all these years later, you're, you're promoting a film, you know, during a pandemic. I mean, that's right. like a show, Stewie. What, honey? What was your first stuff? A show? The first show in California, or the first show I mean, on film? Well, I the first thing on film was an extra in a show in a movie called Next Stop Greenwich Village. Oh my Never. God. Oh wow. Yeah. You didn't, know, you didn't have any lines. I'm talking about. Talking. No, I did. Oh no, no, no. I did. I was an extra. They auditioned extra. Shut up, Peter. I'm talking. I auditioned as an extra. They brought people down. You had to dress like the fifties. You had a, yeah, yeah, a costume yeah. an extra. So it was my first thing. And, and we were in a holding tank with all these extras. And I used to sneak down to the set because I'd never seen a movie. I'd never seen walls open up and, and music playing. And then it stops and actors did dialogue. I'm saying, yeah. What the hell is this? The movies is this is astounding. And the stage manager, who I forget, nice guy, because he knew that I was kind of enthusiastic about it. When it came to to handing out lines, he gave me a line, and I had a line. I went from like seventy dollars a day to one hundred and thirty dollars a day. 
And he gave me a line. I still remember, there's a lot of queers down here, you know, in, in that movie. So that that was the first movie, really, that I that I had lines. A lot of queers down here. A lot of queers down here. Line? But in California, I guess the what was it? Maybe, maybe Hollywood Nights, maybe Scavenger Hunt. That was, you know, okay. and those movies led to uh, to to not necessarily, and then then I became the incredibly iconic actor that I that I now am. In Chicago. Oh. In my own mind. He's well, in Arkansas. Arkansas. In Canada or Chicago? He's in Arkansas. Working in Windsor, Canada, here is Stewie Pankin doing live from downtown Windsor. <laughs> well, Peter, what was your first thing? The that Jackie, was... uh, the Red Skelton Show. Wow. My first card was a uh, 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 AFTRA. And I had five lines on... Uh, on Red Skelton Show, know that kid he plays with the little hat. He's got the yeah. suck in, and he's got the and still a sharp pants, and he walks walks around like yeah. licking the tucker. And hey, well, we were on a cruise ship. He was a little kid running around the deck, and I'm a honeymoon couple with my wife. And uh, uh, she and I walk in, run into him, and go, hey, yeah, yeah. and he does you know five a uh, couple of jokes, yeah. and we moved on. That was my that was my first job. What year was that? Eighteen seventy. Uh, that's a 50s. It had, it had to be in the 50s. 60s. Yeah, late 50s. Had to be in the 50s, right? 66. Shut up, little. No, no, Peter. Yeah. 60s in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I used to watch the Red Skelton show as a as a child. Uh, hey, where do I stand? What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the so 60s. Funny. Wow. Okay. And you both knew what you did, and you're like, I'm, I, this is what I want to do, right? You're like, just like, this is, this is what the fuck. No, I no, I actually, I actually was a, signed up to be a psychology major in college, oh, wow. and but I used to screw around mess with with making my family laugh, and I knew it was inside me. So when I went across the dark, cold campus to audition for the first play as a freshman, I knew that was it. That I, I, I changed me. I, well, there was no drama major at my college, but my friend said the best major for an actor would be English. Oh. So I became an English major and did every drama class I could, except acting. My teacher, God bless him, said, you're act enough. You don't need to take the class. Well, that's so funny. But you learned how to read. I, what? You learned how to read. I, I learned how to read at college. It was uh, That's why it took me three or four years to get past my I first year. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, hey, you guys. So who do they confuse you for? I don't even want to mention their names. Oh, they, they confuse me for? Yes. Import? I got a couple of people. When I was young and pretty, they confused me with Dennis Quaid. Uh, I can see that. I signed an autograph. I was in Chicago at the Rosebud, which is this Italian restaurant there. Yeah. And Meg, his wife at the time, was doing a, a, a movie there. And uh, so she calls and says, come on, let's have dinner. So I go over and I'm having dinner with her at Rosebud and these Two women come over, three women came over and said, excuse us, excuse us. And Mr. Quaid, could I have your autograph? And I went, certainly. And I signed Dennis Quaid. Oh my God, it's so <laughs> And said him on the way, she went, what the hell? <laughs> what, what, what? You want to disappoint him and say Meg Ryan is out with some other bozo? Huh? I'm some old guy. And so, but Dennis Quaid, they've- I, I, get confused. I get confused a lot, even now for Richard Gere. They keep coming up to me. <laughs> And I was sitting with Richard Gere's uh, wife in a restaurant and these four, maybe six old ladies came up to me and they said, Mr. Gere, can I have your autograph? I said, get the hell out of here. Yeah, <laughs> I think you did that to Frank Sinatra too, didn't you? When he came over. That was Don Rickles. <laughs> oh, Don Rickles, there you go. Well, then, you know. <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> There's uh, 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 Meatloaf. I, get, I would I, say Meatloaf. <laughs> I, I know that's somebody, uh, may he rest in peace. But yeah. yes, I, yeah, I, I, he rest in peace. I worked with the guy. Uh, me too. What'd you, you do? Guys, you guys work with Meatloaf? You guys work, both of you guys work yeah. with Meatloaf? Oh, we did a, he did Scavenger Hunt. I did this, the movie Scavenger Hunt. Yeah. I, did a, I did a video called Rock and Roll Dreams Come Through, and it was Angelina Jolie's first film. What? Whose first, first film? Whose first film? Google it. And, and called Rock and Roll Dreams Come Through. And uh, it's, uh, uh, he, he, uh, I'm her daughter, I'm her father, and she has a fight with me, and she storms out of the house and runs away. And then she goes through all this carny folk and everything else, crazy world. And Meatloaf sings with his cape and his jacket, of course, of course, and rock and roll, and rock and they come through. And he saves her and brings her home to daddy, and they're all so happy at the end. Michael Bay directed it. 
Michael Bay? Wow. Angelina Jolie, Michael Bay. I mean, Meatloaf. I mean. And Meatloaf. And me. Who? And, and you. And you. Yes. And, yeah, and Peter Jason. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, I'm like, yeah, Peter Jason. Um, that's fast. That's, that's, that's no, I, I heard people come saying, isn't that Meatloaf? It's not Meatloaf. That's Peter Jason. I had to it all the time. Like, there, there was this kind of thing. So, but again, may he rest in peace. I like his music. So, him and Jim Steinman. Segue. Dennis Quaid was directing of his first movie. It was what? up, and he, he's an old pal of mine. It's a movie up in Montana where he has a home. And uh, so, you know, we, we, we play golf together a lot, and he's a great pal. We all did the long riders together. We're very close. And he says, uh, I'm going to make, I'm directing this movie. I want you to play this uh, sheriff. I think it was a sheriff or somebody like that. I said, great. When are you starting? He said, man, next week. And I said, oh, cool. And about three days before he starts, he calls me up and says, ah, I can't take you on that. Uh, they wanted to get meatloaf. That's funny. That's so funny. Dennis, once again, Dennis Quaid, Meatloaf, and myself. And I got another That's story. hilarious. That's so crazy. This business is crazy. You guys have some crazy experiences. Um, I guess I should ask you actually who you play in this, in this current. Your, your backgrounds are fascinating to me, but I guess I should ask him deep in the forest, who do you each play? <laughs> well, deep, deep in the forest is a story about an old uh, Jewish professor, and there's some other two people in it. I, I don't no, know. no, no, no. He's got it so totally wrong. What? He's really? the head of the de uh, uh, Democratic Club. And <laughs> oh, my goodness, you guys. You know, while we're here, since I have it on my computer, uh, let me let me just sh shout out to the cast of, uh, of uh, David the Father. Ursula. Ursula Brooks, Derwin me. Jordan, Makara Gamble, Peter. No, we don't care about her. Uh, Keith Stevenson, PJ Oakland. Wait a minute. Wendy Worthington, Swell, Will Bradley, Eva Abramian. Eva loved me best. She said, and I'm Martin Spencer. These are the these are the people. What about it, Jedediah, who saved the movie? Jedediah Dyer, is that his last name? Jedediah? I don't know. Jedediah. Jedediah. I mean, you you we want it's a it's a it's a story that you can go, but one of our actors died. Let's just say, say he died. Jedediah was on the crew uh, for Jeremy many times. They said, you want to play the part? And he no, did. No, no, the guy didn't show up. I'm going to say he died because it makes a better story. Okay. He eventually he did die. Died on the set. He, no, he didn't die on the set. He was shot by the director or the he cinematographer? Would, no, he was stabbed by the costume. There was a bullet, a bullet in the box. Oh, shut up. Ammo. So Jedediah stepped in. And uh, PJ, on. He was PJ, PJ, Jedediah Peter, was stepped Peter, on by the cat. Wait, there's a phone call here. The Peter, there's a phone call for you. What? Jedediah stepped in, did a great job as the bad guy. Uh, and he did it in a day. I mean, it was like he jumped into the part oh, wow. and he did a terrific job. So that's it. That's an interesting sidebar to, to this movie. Terrific job. So he quit so, being a crew member and now he's an actor. He is an actor. He's in got New Orleans. Jobs. He moved to New Orleans and now he's acting. Did he really? Job. Everybody else is in New Orleans doing uh, movies. Wait a minute. He that's moved to New Orleans? He yeah. moved to New Orleans? Yeah. Or Georgia, one of those two. Wow. Maybe anyway, let, let's talk about let's talk about Deep in the Forest because it's coming out on the on 31st. the thirty uh, first of DOD. Peter he jokes about it's on it. On demand. I demand. Peter, Peter is, uh, demand. is 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 uh, 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 he does a great job. He does a, he's one of the leading uh, actors in the thing, and it's and it's really a political thriller uh, involving you know knives and guns and and and. Uh, uh, politics, and it's about, but the interesting thing for me, and Peter can disagree or not, it's about a bunch of sequestered people and the dynamics uh, that go on between those, between those people who are kind of strangers, and then they grow to, to, to understand each other and know each other a little better because they have to, because the government is, is searching them down. I don't want to say too much, you but at the, end, at the end, you. the camel dies. That's the only thing I'm going to say. The camel dies? Yeah, that's it. What day was that? Was I not there? <laughs> Horace, the camel does Well, dead. Peter, Peter was very close <laughs> to that animal. <laughs> it, almost ruined his, it almost ruined his marriage, but that's a whole Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Does it come back in the second thing? Okay, and see, so that's, you that's, that's. You know, that's we, by the <laughs> thank you, but goodbye, bye. So that's deep in the forest, and it's uh, it's it's Jeremy's first feature. It's it's pretty good uh, a, a movie, and uh, except for the fact that he, he he cut some of my scenes and edited me badly, it's he, he does a great job.
Well, the camel died, so you're the camel driver. So, the hell, what are you, you going to do? They had to cut him. Now you know, you know, you know, Charles Sherman's going to kill us because he's like, you're not talking about the movie. Oh, tell Charles we're really sorry. Call our agents. <laughs> sorry, Charles. We just talked about the movie. And yeah, I- we did. We just talked too much about the movie. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. We need more stuff about, we need more love stuff about us. Like, uh, what do you love, Stewie? Uh, well, I love you, for one thing. Oh, do go on. Uh, all right. I love you. Uh-huh. What do you like uh-huh. me doing? I love Eileen. That's Peter's wife. Yes. Uh-huh. I, I love my wife. I love my son. I hope so. I love New York in June. How about you? Can you imagine his wife's name is Joy? Her name is Joy. Isn't it? That's funny. Wow, that's great. You great. wake up every morning next to Joy. Joy. You know, and, and wait a minute, New York, New York in June is not good. It's humid. I would do New York in like March, maybe April. Oh, honey, I lived there for 10 years. Peter probably in New York in June is it's horrible. It's, it's horrible. horrible. It's horrible. I know it is. I agree. But New York, you, I, I love New York in February, maybe March. How about you? <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, not New York in June. Ugh, oh, thank you. I mean, I've done it to you. I'm like, ugh. All right, come on, James. Ask us some more questions. We're interesting people. You guys know your fat, your careers. That's why I can watch your careers all day long. But I do have to promote this movie a little bit. So, Peter, who do you play? I don't remember. I played a short fat guy with a hair lip and a club foot. And a cl- uh, oh, club foot. Okay. There I you have go. a gun and then they took it away. Uh, sweet. <laughs> Peter. I don't remember. Peter plays the head of a democratic society who, who helps who helps uh, sequester and, and, and get these people out of harm's way and puts us in a in well, an that's why the way too much information. It's oh, really? you play Mark. I play a serious guy, and Stewie plays a serious guy. Yes. It's actually, a it's, so that's what I call acting. It's actually a red hot love affair wrapped up in music and song. That's how you the best describe the movie. So it's a uh, La La Land. Got it. It's La La Land without the music. Exactly. The music. La La Land without the talent. I mean, uh... <laughs> no, it's about the singing and the jazz. Yeah. You're never going to put this boom, podcast on. Not the ticks or the boom. <laughs> oh, no, I love. No, I love you guys. I, mean, I can do this. I can do this all day long. I mean, for me, I'm just, I'm just. I'm just trying to make sure I do my job and ask for the movie a little bit. That's all. You know, you guys just, well, Stewie is one of those guys. Who helps to create a family? And you, if you on a movie and you make a family, and everyone's working for the thing, and everyone's having a great time, it's a great time. Yeah, you know, and that's what we like, love about a movie. The audience's time is when they watch it. Sometimes it's a great time for them. Sometimes it's not. We're not in control of that anymore. We are in control of the set and having a great time on the set. And we know how to have a great time. And so that's what we do on the set, you know. And. Uh, that's why we go to this. That's why we do these jobs. And there are, are people who come in who just want to work for themselves, you know, and 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 and, and throw the turd in the punch bowl. But mostly, we like to create a family. So it's it's very difficult. The more people you have, the bigger the family. You know, it's very yeah. difficult. Yeah. And uh, Peter used to Peter used to give us an allowance on the set to try to make us a family. Allowance, an allowance. Here's your I'm buying this family eleven dollars. Everyone gets eleven dollars. Okay, that's important. You know, you, you know, Peter has that fatherly look. I think he's like uh, nice, nice father. I have an paternal, uncle. Very paternal. Uncle kind of look. The uncle, double, uncle, uncle look, right? You're an uncle. You look like an uncle of some of sorts. I'm of just sorts. out of stir. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, because I think I, I've been on set before. I love being on set. I think because there's a lot of hurry up and waiting anyway. A lot of times you're just, you're just kind of like waiting around anyway get yeah, there I'm- early stay late i love the set it's my favorite you know part. first of all burl Ives once said they don't pay me for acting they pay me for waiting around the acting i'll do for nothing you know i, I mean when i was when i came here in the seven, every 007. time i saw what i heard it, it was 007 said that line uh when i came oh, out no, of the <laughs> Sometimes if you just ignore him, he'll go away. In the 70s, I used to see signs to Hollywood or get on a set and it was magic. And you know some it still is to see cameras, is to it? see lights. It's it's still it's still an exciting business. I mean, we're lucky to be able to, like Peter says, we don't work. We 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 act, we play. My my friend used to say, I he's a director, play director. And he says, I don't work. Working is laying road, working is breaking wow. rocks. You know, acting and directing, that's 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 gold. That's fun. That's you know, you're it, it it's getting out of work. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. Because you, you, you do today? Right. I, I, I got just, out of work. <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny. I just did. I just did a. I did a, a guest starring role on a series that's on Amazon. Why didn't I get it? I, they they I wanted was so they, light for that thing. You no, know, they wanted us to do a pink and type. They said we'll take James Lott Jr. It was perfect. <laughs> um, they actually wanted us to do a pink and mixed with Peter Jason type. And they said James is the man. We all look, we look sort of like the three of us. So I just said perfect. I'll take it. Hey, my agent once told me they're looking for Stuart Packin type. I said, I'm available. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's the truth. I, know, I love that. But he's like, well, you already went through that or he was. They picked somebody else or whatever. They don't want you in it. You created the role. They don't want you in it. That's so go ahead. You were saying you did a guest spot. Well, no, I said, I, this thing, I enjoyed the set. I knew all the actors who were in, in the episode that I was in. So we we're all friends. They said, we saw you on <laughs> the call sheet. We're so excited you're coming. And and like, we all just kind of, we did. We did, we did a lot of hanging out and practicing and whatever. And it was, you, I was there all day long. And I just smelling the sets, like smelling the stuff behind us, like smelling the, the cardboard and and practicing and, and the cameras. And I loved it. I just think I just think it's something that, you know, it's very extraordinary we get to do this. Cause it, it, it is, it's like, it's like any other profession. Now I've had I've had real jobs. I've had the jobs that sucked, you What's know, where like? I'm pushing papers. What's that what? like? Did they, did What's they that look like? at you funny when you were smelling the set? I mean, I'm just curious how they react. They just they just said that's James. And they just kept it moving. They go, oh, he's just stiffing the set over here. I was like, oh, a set. Because well, the pandemic had been two years. I'm like, oh my god, a set. I mean, like, I just, you know, you know how that was his awesome. job. That was his job. It was like so, so the smell of sets. The, smell the set sets. smell over here. Yes, yeah, so they smell good today. Thank you. They have some good seeds. No, but you know what I mean. Like, you know, when you go on a set, you there's certain things that you electricity's in the air. There's things. What's you that smell over by the two K? James. <laughs> Get over there, James. Well, my nose could do it. My nose knows. The leaking leco. Get over there, James. Get over there. But I just, I just like it. So I'm saying, you guys, you guys have to do this for a, for a, you get you get some pay at the end, which is a nice bonus, right? But like, it's you get some. We do. I think Stuart gets more than you do, but there's some there's something happens when you get some pay at the end. Um, but to do this to play somebody else, it's like I have to play somebody else for a day. Like, what do you get to do that anywhere? I mean, that that, that is a luxury. I think it's a, I love it. And so, but you guys do don't like to go home. home. What? Well, home go, home. go home. Yes, go home. Go home. <laughs> hey, Peter, look, look to opposite the, the way I'm looking. It's like we're talking to each other. Yeah. Go that way. Go the other way. Go the way. The other way. Nice white shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like Peter, you look, look the other way. I guess. But look at him. Go the other way. There you go. You go the other way. I guess. And that's a good way. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Damn. Um. You know, now, now, you, now you see something. Now we lost him. Is it raining where you are? Ooh, no, is it supposed to be raining? No, no, no. it's still sunny. There's some clouds in the sky. Roof on. There's some clouds in the sky, but it's still sunny. It's sunny over here. Um, but no, but I just, I just don't know. So you guys, like I said, your careers are so fascinating because you've seen a lot more. I always say the A-list actors. Who cares? You guys are the ones who can tell us all the stories because you see every. So you see everything when you're out there, don't you? You see it and hear it. everything. 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 No, I'm sure. I'm sure. No, Talk to everybody. Yes, I'm sure. Talk Tell me a story, you. Stewie. Tell me a what? story. Tell Stewie. me a story, Stewie. Tell us a story. <laughs> uh, I, nothing. Peter told the arachnophobia story. Peter. Peter attracts young people, children, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Oh, I mean, I think if I, that your father was a was a was a coach, right? He was a. And Peter like, has an affinity. Education children, and and kids, oh. shut up, Peter. And kids love Peter. Uh, and uh, I can see that. I can see that. Like in arachnophobia, uh, he promised the foot. He actually didn't come to some function because he promised that he coached the football team and he promised the football team that he would go see their game. And, uh, and because the kids loved him and he loved the kids. I mean, he's just great with children. Well, I'll tell you, um, arachnophobia was a hit. I remember that. That was a, I remember what you see. Arachnophobia, it's a good me, kid movie. It's a terrific movie. Yeah, it was a great. I loved. I loved it. It was a guy. It was a John Goodman. It was him, right? He was in it. John Goodman, Jeff Daniels, yeah, Brian yeah, McNamara, yeah. Petey, yeah, me, Holly Jane Kozak, Holly yeah, Jane Kozak, yeah, yeah, Roy yeah. Brocksmith, rest his soul. Roy yeah. Brocksmith, remember Roy? I wrote a song for uh, Arachnophobia, mm -hmm. which they actually used. What? In the trailer. Is it really? I did. Kanaima, sing it. Kanaima. That you. I mean, you wrote that. Oh, that's so. I didn't know that you. Wrote. Wow, I love that. Yeah, I, I liked it too, and they were very nice. They filmed it during the lunch break. And uh, I thought it was just going to be, I like to do it for, for projects I like to do um, songs. But, but, it, but uh, I said it was a hit. I used it. 
But see, you guys are in movies that are, like I said, I mentioned 8 to 48 hours. Like, you guys are in hit movies occasionally. You, know, you go through, it's a business. So some movies are in smart. Occasionally? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying, I've been in some stuff that stunk. I'm saying some stuff that's true. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm direct to video. I'm talking about direct to 99 cent store. I mean, I got stuff that's in the bins. We, we been, all have. Exactly. So I'm saying, exactly. But, you guys, but you guys are in things that are hits. So I'm saying, as I'm saying, I know your name and stuff. So I mean, there's, you are in things that so it must be interesting where you're not number one on the call sheet, but you're in a hit film. Like that's yeah. stuff, you're in a hit film. Well, that happened twice to me. One was Fatal Attraction, which was, uh, oh, yeah. You know, the luckiest thing that ever happened to me. And two was the artist, and I had a, a, a bunch of scenes which were cut, <laughs> you know, but at least you're in the movie, you know, I mean, and you can say I was in an Academy Award and in an Academy nominated movie. I mean, right. uh, you can't, they can't take that away from me. Oh, they can't take that away from me. Now, Peter, take the way they cut. What do you think scenes. is your biggest film? 48 Hours is a hit, but what do you think was your biggest film? My next one. <laughs> I'm all, okay. Well, did, well, uh, more to come. Uh, yes, more to come. Did, yes. My biggest movie was uh, Jurassic World. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It weighed $1.6 billion. I have to say that's my biggest movie. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's you have favorites for different reasons. My favorite movie that uh, the, uh, the ensemble, uh, a couple of them, Deadwood, was one of my favorite uh, series that I ever did. Oh, that was the bomb. I wish it was the bomb. Uh, 33 episodes of that. And I did uh, a movie called The Long Riders, which was all brothers playing brothers. The Keeches, the Carradines, ah. and the guests, all brothers playing brothers. And we got went off for four months to Georgia and gave us a horse and a gun and uh, let us play cowboy. You know, it was, that was a that was a blast. That movie. Now, Deb was a, Deb was a hit too. As a hit series, I watched it. I loved it. I mean, I thought it was great. Um, anything, anything, any stories about Deadwood? Because I, I love that show. It was a, it was a good, it was a good one. About Deadwood? Yeah. Well, the problem with Deadwood, it wasn't a problem. It turned out to be the thing that made it. But you'd get your call time for you know six in the morning and. You get out to the set way out there in the Placerita Canyon, yeah. and uh, you'd be you'd go to hair and makeup. You'd be in the middle of hair and makeup, and the AD would come in and say, "All right, everybody to the set, let's go." Oh, in the middle of hair and makeup, so okay. you go to the set, and they hand out pages. Oh my God, I got four pages here. Oh my God, I, I'm, I won't stop talking. Oh, uh, <laughs> and so he said, "All right," and then Milch would come in. David Milch was the creator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come in, and he'd, he'd, we'd read it just cold the first time. You know, and you'd, and you'd be words in like, what is Brown study? And you, oh, that's kind of a melancholy. Uh -huh. uh, what are celestials? Oh, that was kind of a slang for, for Asians. Oh, okay. And you're, and you're reading through it. You read through the thing. And uh, he explains kind of what's going on. Yeah. Then you read it again. Now knowing a little more about it. And then the director will place you. And then you'll read it another time. And then they'll invite the camera in. And then uh, a cinematographer, and they'll come in and you'll read it one more time. And then they'll invite the whole company in and you'll read it one more time with the blocking. And uh, then he'll say, all right, go off, uh, uh, we, give us two hours and they're, they're, we're gonna light it. And you go off to each other's trailers and, and back to hair and makeup. And you go to each, knocking on each other's trailers. All right, uh, blah, 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 blah. you know, you're doing the thing, trying to learn the lines before you get back in there and do it bang live right there that not, it's, it's kind of like a play almost it's yeah. it's it was so much fun the electricity was and they, and they you know he didn't care if you didn't know the couple of lines we go oh. do it again do it again oh. okay and uh it brought this spontaneity to it that i think was uh uh was was very instrumental in it becoming a kind of a so you never got like the night before here are your pages sir once you know, in a while you know, poor Ian McShane would get speeches. Well, yeah, hello. I mean, he's getting a blow job and he's talking to a, a skull. Right. At the same time. And he's got this speech about his mother. You know, it's on like two pages. And uh, he, did he did it. He did it. I mean, he did it. I, mean, I watched it. He did it. Yeah. He, did it. Wow. he had the biggest uh, line uh, load of anybody. But I remember Powers Booth came in there, uh, God rest his soul. He yeah, came in as my sad. boss. And uh, the first day on the set, he had a, he, they gave him a speech. Then they gave it to him that morning. And actors aren't prepared for that kind of stuff. You know, we just, you walk in there, I felt sorry for the guest stars who came in and yeah. just getting slapped in the face and whoa, 
I mean, I'm sure they do it every day on soaps. I would say soaps. I mean, it's the closest thing. I would say soaps are the closest. But thing. this is different. This is like Shakespearean speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah, difficult, yeah. To, very yeah. difficult to do. But everybody seemed to rise to the occasion, and we all loved being there, and it created a family. And uh, I think it was, uh, it was probably one Great, of the Amazing best. show. No, amazing show. I'm out of the show. Stuart, um, have you ever done any? Well, I'm sorry. What? Wait a minute. Hey, wake up, Stuart. What? Wake up. Back oh, to you. Jesus, he's gonna, no. Yeah. No, I was like, Stuart, have you ever, on your side? Not just like this every morning. Me, 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 I, 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 sub, sub, sub. Me, 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 I, 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 I. I always oh, love that joke. I always, always love that joke. Um, but have you ever done um, any of your sets improv stuff? Do you guys ever? Because he's talking about he's talking about getting lines the last minute. Have you been forced to do any improv or anything on your sets? Well, they're not necessarily in the news. We sort of rewrote some stuff, and they and they were they and they filmed that. We filmed it the original way and filmed it the other way, uh, and it was always better when we rewrote it. I'm joking. The writers were great, including uh, Conan O'Brien. I, like I love what you just said that. Conan O'Brien, Larry David Hurwitz, Larry Arnstein. These were great, great writers. That's hilarious. But, I, but Curb Your, I did Curb Your Enthusiasm, which is all improvised. Which is all improvised. Yes. I mean, you don't get. They don't let you look at the at the at the script. You can't look at the script or even the even the story breakdown. Hey, what kind of what the story is like? When you get on set, they tell you what you have to say, you know, with the points that you have to make, and you're working with uh, with Larry, and, and and then you go, I'm making it up. So today we went to the uh, to the supermarket, and the uh, and the waitress said, hey, "Cut." Now you got to get in the, that you're you're married, so you got to get your wife's name in. Yeah, okay. So I went to the supermarket with my wife, and we met this uh, uh, checkout person, and he was a big. Guy. I'm sorry, you, 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 the, the guy we've cast is small, so you got to say so. And that's the way that show worked. You know, you 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 talk, you cut, you talk, you cut, and if you're lucky, you get a long run, and uh, and and it's as, it's about as improvised as you can get, and it's great because you don't have to learn lines, and I hate learning. Every actor hates learning lines. But uh, that's that's the most improvised show that I ever did. I never did stand up, or I never did improvisational comedy. Uh, you know, um, but I did a lot of comedy, and uh, and Deep in the Forest. Oh, wait a minute, Deep in the Forest. That's an, that was an opportunity to for me to do something different. You know, to do something m more serious and. I, and I love it. I always say, well, what do you want to do? You do a lot of comedy, don't you? And I say, yeah, but what I would really like to do is play a psychopathic uh, killer who eats babies. That would be my, that's the role that I would like to. Uh, to directors, play. screenwriters, hearing this. If you're, if you're out there, I want to play a real bad guy. Okay. I mean, a real, a real. Now, Deep in the Forest, uh, my character Max was, was, was serious and I, and I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed trying to find those notes too. And uh, because I didn't get a chance and in theater back east, and I did a lot of theater movies. I, I played a lot of different parts and, and many dramas. But in, on film, you know, in California, as you know, you, you get cast as one thing and then that's what they cast you as, you know. And I don't mind being the funny fat guy. It's just that uh, I'd like to do some other different things. Yeah. And this was Deep in the Forest was, was an opportunity to do that. Yeah, that's good. I can talk to you guys forever. It's been almost an hour. I have to end the show. I don't want to. You guys are hilarious. Well, let's meet. Why don't we meet at uh, Izzy's Deli and uh, and we'll just continue to do it. Continue. Shit. That's out. I'm going to be late. So order me that uh, uh, pastrami. With, oh, sorry. <laughs> Folks, Peter Jason and Stuart Bacon are in the forest. Well, now he gets top billing. Yeah. Because yeah, he's the star funny. of Deep in the Forest. Turn serious. You turned serious. If you'd have kept funny, you'd have gotten you kept your belly. But no, no, no. You had to go about, oh, I'm serious. I eat babies. And what was the other thing? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I what? haven't eaten a baby yet. I nibbled on an arm once, but that's it. How do you like them? Delicious. James, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. Yes, you guys are great. May 31st, folks. May 31st. Just keep that in mind. VOD, Saban Films. They do a lot of films. These two I jokes. can't wait to see it. I hear it's really good. Yeah, I could see it. <laughs> Who's in it? <laughs> <laughs> the only one you really have to know is Peter Jason because that that that's the, he's the he's the draw. Hey, he's Stu, the guy. Watch this. What is that? We're watching. Oh, it's gone. That, that was your exit stage left. Oh, wait, did he really leave? Leave? Yeah, he, he really left. left. He actually really left. Oh my god, I love it. Well, you guys. I'm James Hunt Jr. <laughs> and I'm Stuart Bangan, and welcome to the James Podcast. Exactly. I think watch was... this. Wait a minute, James. Watch this. Okay. I can't even push the right button. You're like, oh my god. 
this was hilarious, you guys. Um, go see the film. Go get it. Uh, I love my job. I had a nice laugh for the last hour. Um, uh, uh, Extra Connections is on every streaming service platform. If you're listening to this, you have to come back to the show on the video version on YouTube and watch the bit. See you next time. <laughs>